Siberian scientists actually managed to find a carcass with a well-preserved woolly mammoth. And this is a carcass right here. And this woolly mammoth would be about 10 to 15,000 years old. And it was actually discovered here, which are the Novosibirsk Islands, which is just part of Siberia and it's part of just above the mainland of Russia. And the reason why this is important is this is actually an extinct species. So the woolly mammoth is extinct. And as this headline would suggest, it says mammoth blood found in Siberia. Will the Ice Age species be cloned? The question is, now that we found this actual extinct um, you know, species, this, car this carcass, can we use it to clone a woolly mammoth, to bring it back to life? Now, we're going to talk about how it works, how realistic it would be, and why we should care, both as a HSC student and as someone who's generally interested. Because the reason why this is slightly different is because of what we have here with the woolly mammoth we found, unlike the other ones we found in the past, is we found something we believe is blood. So we, we think it's blood, and in this blood could be different types of cells. Right? And, this, and if there are cells, there could be DNA. Now, if there is blood, and in that blood we do find actual cells, what does that mean? Well, it means we could do something called somatic cell nuclear transfer technique, which we've talked about. That's the idea of cloning, the technique used for cloning, and it was used to, to clone all the sheep as well. Right? So we could use that technique, which we'll go through in a second, to actually clone a, a mammoth, so bring back the mammoth back to life. Now, we're going to go through these five steps which are required to be able to actually clone the actual woolly mammoth. Uh, first thing we have to do is we have to be able to extract intact DNA, from a DNA donor. In this case, a DNA donor would quite simply be the actual woolly mammoth. So we have to find a cell inside the blood, and, and that cell hopefully has intact DNA. And the problem is that DNA, because it's so old, will most likely not be intact. So if this is a big DNA molecule, what it will most likely be, it'll be separated into segments, smaller segments. And what scientists have to do is they have to basically glue them together to make up that full set of DNA, which we need which is unlikely to happen perfectly. So that's one reason why it's probably not that realistic because it's unlikely to be able to reconstruct the perfect molecule which we need um, to be able to actually clone that woolly mammoth. Now the next part of that would be to be able to uh, remove the DNA from the unfertilized egg of a surrogate. Remember surrogate is the thing that will carry our um, clone, in this case our woolly mammoth. And in this case we're gonna use the Asian elephant because the Asian elephant is actually the most closely related ancestor of the um, woolly mammoth. So we're going to take a female Asian elephant, remove from the egg, remove its uh, DNA, so we have no more DNA in it. And what we're going to do next is we're going to insert the DNA um, of the woolly mammoth, the one that we've got from the blood, and insert that into the egg of the elephant. So we've, that's something we've discussed beforehand, but this is the idea of now we have an egg, a fertilized egg, and we can let that grow into a zygote, and it's going to have only the DNA of the woolly mammoth in it. So we're going to let that zygote grow in culture. So you can see it's going to go from one cell into a few cells. So it's going to be a small embryo. And the next step, fourth step, is we're going to insert that small embryo back in the surrogate. So after we've done this small um, embryo and tissue culture, we're going to put it back into the surrogate, which is the um, Asian elephant. And we're going to wait for 22 months, and 22 months later, we're going to have the woolly mammoth being born, right? That's the whole idea of this process it's called somatic cell nuclear transfer technique. And now the problem is we've done this in the past. We've actually tried to get a uh, return, a extinct species, which was extinct in 2000, a bird. And by doing so, we've actually managed to get it to be born. So in this case, the woolly mammoth might be born, but the problem is it died straight after birth. So our current uh, standing is it's possible to actually resurrect the, the mammoth based on what we've found, based on the blood, and if there's some cell DNA in there. The problem is, first of all, it's probably not, not going to be intact, which makes the whole thing more difficult. And even if we go through that, cloning procedure is not perfect yet, which means we're probably not going to have a life born until sometime in the future. The idea of bringing back an actual extinct species is called de-extinction. And something that's actually quite common nowadays in terms of being talked about in terms of the science community. And um, it's important to talk about ethical issues that could be surrounding the process of bringing back extinct species. So for example, what environmental impacts could there be if we bring back woolly mammoth? Could the environment of today be damaged or, or destroyed if we bring back an extinct species and put it into that environment? Also, what kind of financial implications could it have? Could the money that we put uh, invest into bring back the woolly mammoth, could that maybe be better spent doing something else instead? Or societal impacts? If we play God and bring back a species, how does that change our view of nature? Do we consider it more as a toy as opposed to a real important thing? 
So these are some of the ethical concerns that we need to talk about. But the main thing out of this whole news story is that it's actually possible, I guess, theoretically possible, while it's not easy, it's, it's possible to bring back a woolly mammoth. But also that there are you know, ethical issues that we need to discuss before doing so. But also what I hope that you get out of this video is that you can see how the content you learn in the HSC. So for example, the idea of how cloning works, which, we, which you would have already learned or will learn in the future, how that can be used to do cool things like bringing back the woolly mammoth. So same kind of process be used on a real life example. But hopefully this whole story was a bit interesting to you.